17's on the debut of the 404 kit. It's only right the Five Stripes put up a 4-0 against the Boys in Gold, their worst loss in club history. And now we continue this wave of momentum, welcoming in the untouchables of the Eastern Conference, FC Cincinnati, before we then make the road jump over for FC Dallas. That's Jason Longshore. I'm Joe Fryhofer. Jason, we were talking about it just before hopping on. This call-wise for you guys in the booth has to be one of the most enjoyable games of the entire season. What a debut at home for Sean De Silva out there on the wing. We saw Saba make his back heel first finish at home as well. Tiago Almada, Miles Robinson, one of the best offensive performances that we've seen all season long. Yeah, let's talk about the Mercedes-Benz Stadium debuts first. Sean De Silva with the volley to open the scoring. Talked about it all week. When you have someone who is that comfortable displaying that level of flair, it really shakes up a defense. They start to back off. They don't want to get put in highlight films. He's hitting volleys on crosses. That's a great jump start for this team in this match. At halftime, Mike Conte asked me about the halftime adjustments. I said they need the second goal early in the second half to put this game into a little bit more comfortable space. I didn't expect him to get it a minute into the second half, but I'll take it. It was a great finish there. And then just to have everything capped off by the other Mercedes-Benz Stadium debutante, Saba Lobjanidze, who'd only had really one normal training session with the club before hopping into this match. And you saw it straight away, fearless in taking players on, great speed on the dribble through the middle, and then the creativity, two back heels in that sequence to then put it in the back of the net for goal number four. It's just the ability of this offense as well to gel. Tiago Amada talked about it post game. These guys having such little time together to be able to collaborate and find that chemistry. Yeah. We saw it in Seattle from the jump with Sean De Silva fitting in so well with these guys. And it seems as though the new attacking pieces have totally fixed the defensive problems that we've had so far this season. Yeah, when you can dominate possession in the way that Atlanta United's doing it right now and finishing sequences, they're finishing attacking forays into that half of the field with shots, with shots on goal. They're not allowing teams to get those transition moments. And when you look at Nashville, and we talked about it beforehand, they look for transition moments with Hani Mukhtar. You can't let them have them. They didn't really have too many of them. I, I thought Mateus Hosechu really kept Mukhtar in check, got some help from Tristan Muyamba as well. But more than anything, it's the possession. And when you have the ball for so long, teams get a little antsy. We saw Seattle do that. We saw Nashville do that. Atlanta has to do the same thing this week against Cincinnati and then on the road in Dallas. Comparing MVP caliber now as we jump to our next opponent in FC Cincinnati, we've got El Mago and Tiago Almada of our own. Over there for Cincy, they've got Acosta, who's had an incredible season so far. The Argentine sitting on 12 goals, eight assists. Seems like it doesn't matter what jersey this guy's wearing. When he comes in to take on the five stripes, always causes problems. This arguably could be one of the biggest tests for the five stripes at home thus far this season. I've had nightmares about Luciano Acosta in DC kits, in Cincinnati kits. Every time he is on the dribble, he is such a problem for any team to deal with. It feels like he always gets up for these games against Atlanta United. But I said it on Saturday night and I will stand by it. I think Thiago Almada is the leader in the MLS MVP race. He passed Hani Mukhtar, who was the leader going into Saturday for me. It's Almada right now with what he's doing, scoring goals, creating opportunities, and in so many of the things that we've talked about all year with him, he'll drop deep into the midfield to help the team play through pressure. He will get involved in all aspects of the team on the ball. It's not purely getting on the ball in the final third and making something happen there. He'll be one of the leaders in touches. He'll be one of the leaders in passes. Nine key passes in the match on Saturday, setting a new club record. Thiago Almada is your leader in the MLS MVP race right now. And Luciano Acosta is going to be pushing. We're going to need it in this test on Wednesday. FC Cincinnati off to an incredible start for their season. First, 11 points clear for the Supporters' Shield in the race so far this season. They're flying high after a 3-0 result for them against NYC FC, following a disappointing result in League's Cup. Then we jump from there all the way down south to FC Dallas, a side that's coming off of a big victory for themselves, defeating Austin FC in the final dying moments of that game in the 97th 
Big center back Tafari comes in for the winner in that one. There are some question marks here as to what could be their starting lineup coming in. Pereira, we know how dominant he's been so far this season. He was out due to illness for the last time out for those guys. So who do we see take in the spotlight and try to carry that offensive attack? We've seen what Alan Belasco can do. The Argentines so far this season, impressive, both on the league side with two goals, two assists, as well as two goals in League's Cup. So he's kind of stepped in to take over that demanding role for the offensive attack. Velasco could be that next young Argentine in Major League Soccer to take the jump. The former Independiente man, one of the most talented players in the league. I think it's about consistency for him. And that's really been the story with Dallas. I, I think this is a, a spot that Atlanta's only been out there one time in Frisco, and it wasn't really a fun trip in 2018. So hopefully that will change. But this is a good Dallas team. I felt like for a long time in the Western Conference, they were the most slept on team out West. Maybe that's still the case. This is a team with a lot of talent. They're very good at home. It won't be an easy one for Atlanta United, but after the trip to Seattle and getting that win, I think you have the blueprint for how you want to play. And it's the same at home, the same away. Keep the ball work teams into bad spots and then exploit them with that attacking quartet that could be from the start by the time we get to Frisco with Saba on the right, Shande on the left, Tiago Almada pulling the strings, and Big Yorkos up top. Something to keep an eye on, by the way, 17s, depending on this lineup for FC Dallas, when they're with Jesus Ferreira in the attack, they are 7-1-0 when he does score. Without him, when he does not find the back of the net, 1-8-6, so a big question mark. They're in the striker position that will have a huge factor on the result in this game. We first begin, however, with FC Cincinnati. We're back inside of the A once again. Bring that home environment. Kickoff set, as always, at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time through the MLS season pass on Apple TV. You and Mike are back at home before you prep up for the road trip to Texas again, match after match. But what a fun one to call once again at home. Yeah, we're at home on 92.9 The Game on the Odyssey app. 7 o'clock for the Five Stripes Countdown. 7.39 kickoff, and you can listen to us on Wednesday on Apple TV's MLS Season Pass. Choose the home team radio option. And then out in Frisco, we'll be on air at 8 o'clock for the Five Stripes Countdown with kickoff just after 8.30. That's Jason Longshore. I'm Joe Fryhofer. 17, six points out of the last two. Let's make it nine out of the last three as we welcome in now FC Cincinnati into the A for one of the biggest home tests of the season. We'll see you guys at Mercedes-Benz Stadium.